Andrews and on tonight's show we've got Mr Matthews. Good evening, good evening. You're so kind. So Mr Matthews, you're the leader of the 100% Unemployment Party, yeah? Yeah. How did you know that? Well, because I invited you on the show. You have a plan, yeah? You, you want to make the whole of the UK and Western Europe totally unemployed by, I think it's 2030. Yeah. However, there's still stubborn bits of resistance in the UK where there are still small pockets of people still working. But we plan to stop that with a carrot and stick approach. Right. Explain. We give each of them a free carrot and a free stick as an incentive to go on a stage one and tram. Now, a parliamentary subcommittee recently suggested that the UK, and I quote down here, is at the forefront of a tide of optimism about the state of the economy. A strategy of untrammed conversion courses were mentioned as being beneficial to the fiscal monetary policy of your party's uh, monetary policy. That's correct, yeah. Section 2 of subsection paragraph 3b part 79a says it all. Yes indeed, and I go on further to quote. Mr Matthews and Trans present and generate gross proportional sub-opportunities in a socio-economic model of society today. Need I say more? You could do, but I don't think anyone will know what you're talking about. Anyway, we plan to penalise people if they do not go on our untrans. We'll not allow them to watch soap operas on TV, but the biggest forfeit of all is that they'll not be allowed to watch the BBC late night weather forecast. Now come on, don't you think that's a bit harsh, Mr Matthews? Well, maybe, but they can always watch it on the other side. When do you receive your knighthood? In five months, three weeks and two days' time. You must be anxious. Not really. The Queen's great and all that, but it'll just be another day for me. You know the usual sort of thing, rounds of press conferences and things. Actually, I'm a very shy person. Yeah, yeah, pull the other one. Well... I understand, well, yeah, I understand the 2087 Forward Planning Committee, which meets in the not-too-distant future, and I quote from this here, has on its agenda to find the unequivocal answer to lack of untrainability in this country and Western Europe today. I go on further to quote, finding the most sensible, sustainable and viable alternative to trainability is our objective, yeah? Failure is not an option. Yeah, that's right. Indeed, the Prime Minister gave a speech the other day, and I've got further quotes from, from this. Never has there been such a tide of optimism thanks to the hard and dedicated work of Mr Matthews here, and his FTTT, i.e. his Free Thinking Think Tank team. Just think, Mr Matthews, soon you may well be in who's who. When? When? Dunno, dunno. <laughs> whatever, whatever. What? 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 Hasn't he got something to do with electricity? Didn't he in, in uh, steam engines or something? Did that? Sure, sure. George Bernard. Sure. He was a playwright. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, that's a turn up for the books. <laughs> What's a poet who becomes a lawyer good at? Poetic justice. <laughs> Any? Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Right. Um, I brought part of an untran exam paper with me. Would you like to see Absolutely. It? Let's have a look. Let's show the audience. Yeah, come on. Okay. <clears throat> Question two says that if you go into an office and everyone's working hard and no one has been trained in untrainability, what do you do? Is it A, do you nothing, B, hand out leaflets about untrans, or C, talk about soaps? Well, I would think surely, if you wish, you're going to hand out leaflets about untrans. Come on, no, the answer is C. You talk about soaps, thus oh. ensuring people will get bored and then they'll choose to go on an untrans because they want to achieve something in their lives. Right, I'll make a note of that. That's very interesting. Now, have you got any more exam questions we can look at this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the clock's ticking slowly at the end of a busy day. What do you do? Well, let me see. What you could do, you could read last year's untram exam questions to cheer you up. No, although that might oh, right. indeed cheer someone up. Actually, it's a difficult question, that one. The real answer is to change the battery because it's flat, as that's why the clock's sticking slowly. People always think this is a trick question, don't know why. I expect the exam invigilator is a professor or academic of some sort. No, no, I admit we have a problem there, you see, as all the academics are unemployed oh, right. because they went to my courses. Mm. The person who looks over the exam has taken an untran exam in the past that failed miserably, and so therefore untran exam invigilators are not the ideal persons to choose to run an untran exam. 
Mr Matthews, who marks the exam questions? Tourists who come to feed the pigeons. Right, that's interesting. Mind you, sometimes they find exam papers with nothing written on them. How come? Well, if it's a dark evening, the candidates can't always see the questions because there's no lighting due to engineers being made unemployed because they've gone on, my, on the courses. There's often no power or heating either. Well, all this must be quite a problem for the exam candidates, I'm sure. Yeah, it's not uncommon in the winter to see an exam candidate wearing an exam paper as a hat right. to try and help keep him or her warm. Uh, also, don't forget there's a worldwide shortage of ink and pens are in short supply due to my courses as pen makers have been made unemployed. Right, I'll make a note of that actually about the pen maker. My pen ran out? <laughs> Dear me. Now that is complete vindication of Mr Matthew's untrained courses. What can I say? We've learned so much this evening. I tell you what, we, we may well have you on the show again in the near future um, to, and we'll have a look at some more untrained questions, right? That would be interesting. So, good night, viewers. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Good night. Good night.